We are asked to determine whether this integral is convergent or divergent, and you're probably completing this question within the section of your textbook on improper integrals, but it may not be obvious that this is an improper integral because a lot of times in those types of problems, one of the bounds would either be infinity or negative infinity, and of course we don't have that here, so it's not obvious that this is an improper integral. But consider the lower bound of zero. If you were to plug zero into the function, you would have 27 divided by zero raised to the power of five. This would give us 27 over zero, which of course is undefined. So it wouldn't really be obvious how to integrate an expression when one of the bounds actually yields an undefined result when plugged into the function. More specifically, what we have, and if we look at the graph, we can understand this, we actually have what is known as an infinite discontinuity located at x equals zero. We can see that the graph ascends to infinity as we approach zero on the x-axis. And so this is just another perspective to show us that we need to do something special in order to evaluate this integral. Here's what we do. We're going to actually change that lower bound from zero to t. And this is permissible so long as we take the limit as t approaches zero. Now, specifically, we're going to be approaching zero from the left, excuse me, from the right side of zero. And we know it's from the right side because if we look at this graph, we can see that in order to approach zero, we would actually have to move from the right side of the zero. So even though the y value is approaching infinity, the x coordinate as you sort of move along these points is approaching zero, but it's doing so from the right side of zero. So we indicate that by putting a little plus sign, and that shows us that we're approaching zero again from the right side of zero. So that takes care of rewriting the lower bound. The upper bound is still just one. Now, instead of doing 27 over x to the fifth, what we'll do is bring the x to the fifth to the numerator. This will be rewritten as 27 x to the negative five. And then what we can do is integrate. Now this is a relatively straightforward integration because all we have to do is add one to the exponent. This gives us 27 x to the negative four and then divide that by that new exponent, negative four. We'll put the negative sign on the side like so. And then we're going to evaluate this from t to one and we still must make sure we take the limit as t approaches zero from the right. To help us understand this, what we'll do is move the x to the denominator, and when you do that, you will no longer have x to the negative four, you'll have x to the positive four. And then what we'll do is we'll plug in the upper bound followed by the lower bound. Now the upper bound is one, so we're gonna have the limit as t approaches zero from the right of negative 27 over four multiplied by one to the power of four. Then we'll plug in the lower bound and we're gonna subtract. So we'll have minus, well, we're gonna have minus negative 27. So why don't we just do plus 27 over four t to the fourth. Now we know that this value here is a finite value. We don't even really need to compute it if we don't want to. What matters more so is what's going on over here. Because remember, t is approaching zero. So in essence, we're still plugging zero in for t after integrating the expression. So we're actually still going to be left with 27 over zero. So let's take a look at that more carefully. The first term is just that negative 27 over four if you were to simplify it. But again, more importantly, you're gonna have plus 27 over four multiplied by zero raised to the power of four. So this is still undefined. And we can actually look at this still more specifically. Remember, we're approaching zero from the right. So our values of x would be very small values because we're approaching zero, but they'd be very positive values because we're approaching it from the right. So in essence, what happens here is in the denominator, we're going to get a very small number because we're taking a very small number that's close to zero and we're raising it to the power of four. And then we have 27 on top. 27 divided by a very, very small number would actually be infinity. Whenever you divide by a tiny number, your result gets really big. So you end up with negative 27 fourths plus infinity in essence, which is infinity. This is a divergent integral. So the answer here is indeed just divergent.